Good morning! Today is Pentecost Sunday and we are delighted that you are worshiping with us. We hope that you find our time together meaningful. If you're new to First Christian, we would love an opportunity to connect with you. So you can go to our website, icdisciples.org, and there on the home page, you will find a connection card. You can fill that out and we will look forward to responding. Just a reminder that as we do every Sunday, we will share communion together during worship. So uh, go ahead and gather whatever elements you will receive today for the bread and the cup. Um, also, if you would like to light a candle alongside us, you can get one now. As we begin worship, we do light a candle today. This candle is a reminder of the Spirit of God that surrounds us and calls us to action. We invite you to sing together, Wake, the dawn is now full rising. Let us worship God together as we await the coming of the Spirit. Pray with me. Holy Spirit, come into our midst and make us aware of your presence. After all, too often we neglect to listen to you, to notice you, to allow ourselves to be moved by you. 
But today, as we remember the Pentecost story, we are reminded that you are with us. So comfort us with your presence, but don't stop there. Prepare us to be convicted by your presence as well in ways that both cause us to confess our unfaithfulness and in ways that cause us to live faithfully on God's behalf. Too often we want you to speak in a still, small voice, and yet we refuse to listen. Too often we want you to comfort us, and then we refuse to comfort others. Too often we want you to be manageable, and yet we know that you challenge us to be braver and stronger and more faithful than we have yet to be. So blow into our lives and disrupt our easy ways. Burn into our hearts the truth of God's love. Build bridges between ourselves and others of God's children who we don't even notice and sometimes refuse to know. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Today is the day of Pentecost, when we remember how God gave us the gift of the Holy Spirit, so we can say and do the wonderful things that Jesus did. It happened after Jesus went away, the people of God were in Jerusalem to celebrate the great Thanksgiving feast called Pentecost. They came from every country. And Jesus' friends were in Jerusalem. They were waiting for the gift God promised to send, the gift of the Holy Spirit. And suddenly, a sound like a mighty wind filled the whole room, and what looked like flames of fire came to rest on them. And all were filled with the Holy Spirit. They were so excited. They began to tell the amazing things God did. They told about Jesus and that God raised Jesus from the dead. And the people from all the different countries, they could understand them in their own languages. They heard what the disciples said in their own language. What should we do, they asked. And Peter said, Change your ways, be baptized, and you will be washed clean and new, and you will receive the Holy Spirit. God's promise is for you and your children, and for everyone God calls. 
I wonder, I wonder what it felt like to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit on the Pentecost. I wonder how Jesus' friends felt as they told the amazing things about God. I wonder how the people felt when they were baptized and they received the Holy Spirit. I wonder how they knew that it was the Holy Spirit. I wonder what all these people will do now that they have the gift of the Holy Spirit. I wonder what it was like on the day that you were baptized and you received the Holy Spirit. I wonder what the Holy Spirit wants for us to do with God's gifts. Today we celebrate the day of Pentecost. The disciples had been waiting for the promised Holy Spirit, and the story we hear today is Luke's telling of its arrival. We are reading from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. Let us listen for a word from God. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound, like a rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one of them heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they should all prophesy. And I will show, show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. And everyone who calls my name of the Lord shall be saved. May God bless our hearing of the word. In Teaching a Stone to Talk, Annie Dillard writes, Does anyone have the foggiest idea what sort of power we blithely invoke? It is madness to wear ladies' straw hats and velvet hats to church. We should all be wearing crash helmets. Perhaps no story in scripture illustrates this better than the Pentecost story as told in Acts 2. 
while John tells us that Jesus gives the disciples the Holy Spirit by the simple and seemingly gentle act of breathing on them, here Luke paints a very different picture. Here the Spirit comes in ways that can only be described with loud sounds and surprising sights and impossible interactions. Here the Spirit bursts into the room with power and energy. As Dr. Margaret Amer writes, the Spirit comes suddenly, even violently, upon the gathered. Here in this text, when the people are amazed, this should be considered a less than pleasant emotion. This is not the joy of a child seeing a magic trick. These have gathered because they have heard the violent wind. Their sentiment is closer to bewilderment. They are flummoxed by all of the signs and portents. Friends, if we have gotten comfortable with the Pentecost story, if we do nothing more today than delight in the bright reds and the candles and the spring breezes, then we need to hear and experience it again. Because the God who comes in the Spirit on Pentecost and who keeps showing up for us again and again is a God who asks something of us. This is a God who calls us out of our comfortable places and into the world. We remember that when we were in our building in past years for this day's worship, we would dress up the sanctuary with lights and sounds, with gleaming and glittering fabrics, and probably with more candles than the fire marshal would be comfortable with. Pentecost is, as someone in Bible study referred to it, a day of razzle-dazzle. And we enjoy the ways this day engages our senses. But remember, it isn't just about being visually shocked in worship. It isn't just about doing something a little different. We dress things up at Pentecost because this is an experience that stands out. It is a shocking experience, not just in the moment, but because of how it calls us out. And we must not lose that reality. Because today is a day when we are asked to hear again the ways we are called out into the world. It's a day when we are asked to meet people in the midst of their lived reality and to carry with us not only the presence but also the power of our God. And what better time than now for this story to show up again? We have spent 14 months physically separated from one another. We have spent 14 months with very little in our lives being what we might call normal. And while everything isn't back to the way it used to be, we are at the point where we can see the possibilities again. We are at the point where we are seeing each other more than we did. We are at the point where we are rejoining some groups and activities that had been put on hold. We are at the point where we are hopeful that before too long, we will worship in our church building again. Although I think we've also learned that we will never worship only in our church building. So what better time than now? As we are feeling the pull to step back into old ways, what better time than now to intentionally listen to the Spirit? Friends, there is much about how we have been church together that we want to hold on to. And God has a vision 
for how we will continue to grow and change and make a difference in the world. God has a call for us not just to do that with which we are comfortable. God also has a call that stretches us into sometimes uncomfortable places, but always into God's intention. So what is the calling that God has for First Christian Church? What gifts has God shared with you to support the mission to which we are called together? What dreams are our old people dreaming for our ministry together? What visions are our young people embracing to move us forward in Jesus' ways? What prophetic word is coming through our siblings, male, female, and non-binary, old, young, and in between, rich and poor, LGBTQ and straight, white, black, indigenous, and people of color? What dream and vision, word and calling is the Spirit blowing into our midst as we are called to be ever more faithful? These are the questions for this day. And if our best answers do nothing more than make us comfortable, then friends, we probably need to listen again. Because the Spirit doesn't blow us inward, but blows us out into the world, into the lives of people who are different from us, into places where joy mingles with trauma, into places that cause us to stretch and become more than we already are. As Reverend Alan Harris said, more often than not, the Spirit calls me to use my power, place, and privilege to ensure that other voices are heard, other interests are considered, needs are met, safety is secured, and faithfulness is honored. So on this Pentecost Sunday, let's be intentional about listening. Because the last thing we are asked to do is to go back inside and quit interacting with the world. The last thing we are asked to do is to take care of ourselves and not worry about anyone else. The last thing we are asked to do is to build walls of protection around ourselves while the people on the other side are suffering. Pentecost is a wonderful day in worship. But it is also a day to remember that our faith is intended to disturb us, intended to send us out, intended to cause us to listen to new voices and see people we usually just walk past. Pentecost is a wonderful day in worship, but it doesn't end here. Rather, from here, we are sent forth to be the presence of Christ in this world with all the joy and risk that entails. After all, remember what Annie Dillard said, we must be ready to take off our straw hats and our baseball caps and to put on our construction hats and our crash helmets because God is about to do surprising things in us and through us. Friends, put on your crash helmet. Here comes the Spirit. The Spirit is here in our midst. We feel it in the words, the wind, the fellowship we share. The Spirit insists that we are all one. The Spirit impels us from our locked rooms into the world in service to others. There is an urgency to this day. We are reminded and we recognize the Spirit at work through us and we respond. 
Our church is at work in the world through our contributions and through our actions. We are grateful for your continuing support of the ministries that happen at and through First Christian Church. And I invite all of us to share of our resources as an expression of Christ's love for all people. Financial offerings can be shared by mailing a check to the address on the screen or by using the donate button on the website. I also invite you to consider other ways you can be an offering to our community and the world. Let us give gladly and generously. Wind, fire, spirit. Pentecost is a day that jolts us, impels us, drives us forth. It is a reminder that we as disciples are called not just to talk, but to action. That we are called to build relationships, help to repair rifts, and to spread the good news of God's love through what we do in our communities and in our world. We are called time and again to feed the hungry, clothe the unclothed, visit the sick and imprisoned. We are called to comfort the grieving, to be a shoulder for those who are weary and sad, to be light when there is darkness. This meal is also not just something we do weekly and then go back to business as usual. This meal also spurs us to love's action, to compassion's work. This meal that we share, offered to all people by God, is a commitment we make to be the body of Christ for a world in need of healing. And so today we remember the meal that Jesus shared. When he took the bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to each one there, and said, this is my body given for you. As we eat of the bread, we offer our bodies to the work of God in our world. After supper, Jesus took the cup, he blessed it, and said, this cup represents a new covenant of my love for you. As we drink from the cup, we affirm our desire for God's loving spirit to flow through us. I invite you now to share in this meal.
Please pray with me. Dear Lord, we have partaken of communion in remembrance of your blood and your broken body. Let us also remember your direction to share God's message of love and forgiveness throughout the world. We may not hear people speaking in tongues, as happened at the first Pentecost, but often we choose not to hear others at all. We pretend they are speaking in a language we don't understand. God, you ask us to listen with our hearts and minds in order to fulfill the mission you have set for us. The tasks we are called to do may seem strange or difficult, or we may not understand the purpose. Let us have faith that you know our weaknesses and capabilities and have designed a plan for each of us to spread your message of love and forgiveness. Lord, please let us be open to your call. Let us trust that you know what is best for us and give us the strength to complete the tasks before us. Amen.
As we go forth, may we be spurred to compassionate action and loving work. And may we always feel the Spirit moving within us. Amen.